Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that focuses on success stories in Hawaii, the owners of those businesses, and also the support groups that help those businesses be successful. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 uh, from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, we are very pleased to have DBED, which is the Department of Business and Economic Development and Tourism, with us today. We got two of the division chiefs here, um, or branch chiefs, I should say. Uh, Jamie Lum, who's the branch chief for business development, and then also Mark Ritchie, who's the breach, uh, branch chief for business support. And so they, they do a lot of support and events to help small businesses and large businesses, for that matter, be successful in Hawaii. Uh, and they're here to tell the story about DBED and T. So, Jamie and, and Mark, welcome to have you back. Nice Good to be here. here with you again. Now, I was uh, looking at the org chart for DBED, and it's pretty massive. I mean, there's a, a lot of branches and a lot of moving parts to this. Um, and we might show that on the, the screen here in a second, but um, maybe you can explain some of this to us. I mean, it looks like there's an awful lot of moving pieces here. Yes, um, I mean, DBED is a, uh, it's not one of the biggest uh, departments in, in the state government, but it has a, a number of divisions and then a lot of attached agencies. And that's why sometimes people get confused about what exactly DBED does because there's a lot of different moving parts to it. Uh, Jamie and I, we're in the Business Development and Support Division. You can sort of see that here on, on the end from DBED proper. But then also there are a number of attached agencies. And just to run down maybe a couple of, of, of those that are maybe of most interest to businesses in Hawaii would be, um, maybe we could start out with, the, for instance, the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation. That, uh, it's a small organization, but they're basically tasked with uh, trying to bring more uh, financing or venture capital into Hawaii. Okay, so that they help bring that capital, the source of capital, into Hawaii. They can then invest to in help, some of the businesses right, to help here. fund companies, right. and they also invest in accelerators. And then they uh, invest in venture funds themselves that are actually interested in funding Hawaii companies. Uh, and they have plenty of money, right? Um, <laughs> well, they're always. I'm sure they're they're always looking for more. But uh, they have uh, to go into the legislature and. Yep. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Request those funds. Get that funding yes. from right. somewhere. Right. Yeah. And then another attached agency is the High Technology Development Corporation, and they're tasked with trying to grow the technology based uh, businesses and companies in Hawaii. Um, and then maybe um, another one is maybe the Small Business Regulatory Review Board, and that's uh, something similar to what you do at the federal level, right. but basically a review board looking at administrative rules that are promulgated in response to statutes and to make sure that they're as business friendly uh, as possible. Right, and they, they meet every month, and I know Tony pretty well, and I sometimes go to those meetings, and, and so it's a pretty dynamic group from all the different islands, too. Yes. Right. You know, so that, that's a great organization. So what else is going on? Well, in terms of the, the core um, you know, functions of, of the department, I mean, we're, we're large, like Mark said, maybe not in personnel, but it, we, there's a large span of, of what we cover because we are the economic development um, agency for the state. So right. creating broad policies for... Generating billions of dollars in right, revenues. Right. I mean, that's critical to the state. Right, and looking for where the... Um, um, where the most promising opportunities are for the state for you know to to um, create um, a good living for our our residents so um, you know Mark and I are in the business development and support division that's one of the core um, agents uh, uh, parts of the department but we also have um, like our foreign trade zone um, and although that's a federal program but that's very important for companies that want to import and export and they have services uh, there to help and, companies and the, and the trade zone the area. foreign trade zone is is close to downtown right by the mm -hmm. federal right, building right, right? yeah right. it's right across the street right. right just across from restaurant row yeah yeah right. and that's um a fairly new facility uh, very clean very nice very big um, what goes on there what what is some of what the foreign trade zone does well, the, the foreign trade zone actually houses a number of companies and, uh, and, and manufacturers as well. And it's probably of most interest to companies that are importing from overseas uh, uh, inputs and then assembling products and then re-exporting them out of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in a foreign trade zone, then you don't have to uh, pay customs duties. 
I see. Okay. And even then, if you import inputs and then assemble them into another product, and if that product has lower customs duty, then it can actually come into the U.S. at a lower customs duty. Okay, so it actually can save some pretty, yes. right. pretty, pretty decent right. dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they're a good resource, too, because they, a lot of the, the major um, customs brokers, you know, the kind of mm -hmm. services that companies that are doing imports or exports need are housed down there, so they're a good resource. They also have um, um, warehousing facilities, you know, for the, the goods that are That's being right. brought in, um, as well as... Um, uh, some of the nice conference facilities that right. are there that yeah. are like available good training for opportunities. Right. Yeah. Right. And so if there was a, a company out there that was in Hawaii that had a, a successful product maybe here in Hawaii or in the U.S., if they wanted to explore how to export this, could they go there and learn how to go and what the process is? Would that be one of the uses for it? Sure. Uh, I know that the people at Foreign Trade Zone are always willing to go and you know talk with companies. Or companies can go down there and, and visit with them, learn more about what's available, what the advantages are for mm -hmm. being in that facility, and right. and uh, really seeing what um, you know how FTZ can and, help. And also, the Export Assistance Center is located there, and that's the federal government uh, right. export assistance uh, arm or branch yeah. with the yeah, International Trade Administration and the Department of Commerce. Well, you know, and that's something that I think everybody should at least have in the back of their mind is because you. You know, Hawaii is a it's a million million five population, um, and there's limits to how much product can be moved and sold here. You know, um, and exporting would be a natural uh, right. extension of that. Right. So that you yeah, know that is one of the reasons why um, we have a program that tries to um, uh, ex. Um, expose companies that are looking for ways to expand mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. to, to exporting as, as a way for them to um, kind mm -hmm. of um, kind of grow their companies. Right. Yeah. Now, also part of uh, DBED includes other, I mean I know that uh, I, I work with Act 88 a little bit and I do some film credit work uh, with some of the productions and, and the film office also falls under DBED and, and that's, that's right. another highly visible and very big dollar uh, type right. of activity yeah. in Hawaii that, too. Right, that's our creative industries division and they're responsible for growing uh, the, the film industry uh, but also just uh, cultural products mm -hmm. and, and the arts mm -hmm. and uh, growing those industries in Hawaii. So it could be music as well? Yes. Correct, yeah. yeah. Very good. Visual, performing arts and all of that. And they have their creative labs um, going on where they you know bring in these people that are Creative minds, but they learn more about the business side of of uh, you know, of growing that that part of the economy. So you know, there's a, a little joke that goes around being an accountant, being a creative accountant. A long time ago, used to be a good thing. Now it gets you in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but I, I do like the creativity, but don't tell the AICPA yeah. that. But being creative, I think, is fun, and, and it's a special right. breed of people, and, and can right. bring some real revenue. And that's a clean industry. Right. I mean, right. it doesn't right. pollute anything. Right, right. And also, right. it's related to the tourism industry, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a lot of those entertainers are working in Waikiki and yeah. other resort areas. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. Can you tell me a little bit more about, uh, you know, Jamie, what, what does business development branch do? What specifically are you up to? Uh, we, in the last few years, have been focusing, as we talked about, uh, exporting as a way to help companies grow their business. Yeah. Um, but that stemmed from basically a, a grant from the U.S. Uh, Small Business Administration mm -hmm. when uh, the previous administration was looking to increase U.S. exports. Um, so they put some money into that, and so states are uh, have the op opportunity to go after these dollars that SBA puts out. And the whole thing is to help uh, companies that uh, don't know about exporting to learn about exporting, or for companies that are exporting, um, help them to grow, find new markets, or you know, well, it can be an to. intimidating process. But there are, I mean, it's not a new process. I mean, people have done this before for a long time. So it's just a matter of learning what the procedures are to make it all work and that's where you come in right so with uh, with the funds that we have we do um, export readiness training as we call mm -hmm. it through some mm -hmm. seminars a series of seminars that we've been doing with the Hawaii Pacific Export Council uh, and then working also with uh, Hawaii Pacific Export Council or HPEC and the small business development centers uh, we partnered mm -hmm. with them to help um, mentor and counsel com right. companies that are looking for it. Uh, and we actually have a, a small business development, uh, SBDC, on every island. Yes. And yes. so this, this is, so uh, you know, yeah. we've got rural outreach going. In right, exactly. Right. So it's not, right. yeah, 
any company on any island can can be assisted. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, with a lot of the training, we do uh, live streaming as well, so right. the neighbor island companies can participate as well, and they don't have to fly over here. And how would somebody find out about this information if they're watching a the show now and they go, "Wow, this sounds all very interesting. Tell me more." There's a website they can go to. Our website is invest.hawaii.gov, and there's an exporting tab. You just go to that, and there's a whole section on the a high step we call it Hawaii State mm -hmm. Trade Expansion Program and it will go all through the all the yeah all the Very links good. for signing up all right and if anybody has any questions about where to find that they can uh, email me and and I'll be sure to, to forward any of that information on uh, and my email address is simply reg at regbaker.com and so if anything comes in any interest I can either respond directly or I can get it to you and, and you can point them in the right direction uh, Mark, can we switch to you for a second? Sure. Um, you're in a business support area. Right, yeah. So. Um, our lines blur a little bit because we mm -hmm. also help with the, with the High Step program, but business uh, support, our major programs are the Enterprise Zone program, which is uh, a state-county partnership uh, whereby companies can receive tax incentives for growing their businesses in designated enterprise zones, which are designated by the counties, subject to uh, Census Bureau data showing that those are economically distressed areas. Are so it's an idea, it, the idea is to address sort of job creation and mm -hmm. business stimulation mm -hmm. in sort of less advantaged areas of Hawaii. Which is a great, great thing to be doing because they definitely need to have that development out there. Um, job development, but is this a, fe a federal credit or a state uh, credit? No, it's or? state taxes. It's state yeah. taxes. Basically, you get a GET waiver, and then you get a uh, state tax credit, and it's a non-reimbursable credit, and you can't carry it forward. So it's it's really designed for more successful companies because you're really going to benefit from the program if you owe the state tax money. Right. Right. And that's. I guess always a nice thing to have is to be able to have some sales in a specific area and then have some of the taxes waived to, that makes it all the more profitable right. to be moving right. resources and job opportunities into right. those right. needed areas. And it's a seven-year program. Uh, so it starts out with the credit at 80% and then it declines by 10% each year. And then after seven years, the program is over. But manufacturers and agricultural companies can get a three-year extension. So they can go up to 10 wow. years in the program. That's pretty lucrative for them. That's yeah. good. Um, and so other support activities? Uh, uh, the other kind of major program we have is what we call our CBID program, which is the Community-Based Economic Development Program. And that is, uh, by statute, uh, we uh, have a, a CBID revolving fund, which we can use to provide technical assistance, uh, loans, and grants uh, to nonprofits and for-profit companies that have a community economic impact. So this is sort of the economic development part that is from the ground up. Mm -hmm. so you're looking at different communities, either geographic communities or other types of communities that are uh, somewhat distressed or need this type of assistance. And so we look for projects and types of companies that are going to have a community economic impact. Any um, size limitations as far as company size, uh, employees or sales? Uh, or? No, there's nothing by statute that does that. Uh, what we're really looking at is what the community wants and then also if the, the, the type of, let's say we make a loan to a for-profit company, why would we do that? It might be because that company is sourcing all of its materials locally. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a multiplier effect in a particular community in Hawaii. So we see that, like the Enterprise Zone program, as helping sort of stimulate business activity and help a community maybe. And it tends to be more rule-based. Right. Well, naturally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got enough of that in downtown Honolulu. We need to push it out a little bit. You know. uh, and the neighbor islands, too. All right. Well, we have uh, reached a break point. Um, when we come back, why don't we talk a little bit about some of the things that are happening in the near future. I know we got Small Business Week coming up, and there's a lot of activities planned around that. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we're here talking with the DBED today, and we're finding about all of the different activities that they've got going on across the state to stimulate the economy and to work at increasing our standard of living here. Uh, we're going to be right back in about 60 seconds. Hi, and thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I host 
the Hawaii Food and Farmer series with my co-host Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. Every week we bring on farmers as well as all the other individuals and organizations that help support a thriving sustainable food system. In fact, it's interesting to learn what others are doing so you don't have to be a Hawaii resident or producing food on Hawaii to be featured on the show. Like today's guest, Wyatt Bryson of Jewels of the Forest and Michael Lab Solutions. Aloha, thank you. It's been a pleasure being on the show. Um, I love uh, seeing what you guys do and I really support your mission. And uh, it's really nice being back in Hawaii. And uh, thank you again, it's an honor. So you can see guests like Wyatt every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Aloha and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. This week we're talking with DBED and we're finding about all the different types of programs that they do statewide to help stimulate the economy and, and get our standard of living back up to where it needs to be. Um, we were talking a little bit about all the, the different divisions and branches within DBED uh, in the first half of the show. There was one that was kind of highlighted that we didn't touch on yet, and that's the uh, research and, and development. Um, area read right you know so tell us a little bit about that well we do have um, our state economist dr. Eugene Tian um, and uh, and he has a staff of economists but um, you know it's important these kinds of data uh, a lot of it is based on the census data mm -hmm. or they just gather information about uh, um, what's going on in Hawaii population you know different kind of um, economic statistics and a lot of businesses use it uh, for either their own business planning or uh, some people use it if they're putting proposals together. So it's a very useful resource. So that's just what we want to point out is that um, uh, that the data is on, available online and, and that we want you know uh, businesses to use it. So. Uh, a couple, couple questions pop up. Uh, it is a database so it's got a lot of different information on it. Is it based on the, the residents or the businesses or both? Uh, both because yeah. because it has census a lot of the a lot of the information is based on the US census right. um, so there's stuff on yeah um, communities and and the people and jobs but then they're also industry type they have right. some special reports too that right. they, they have do on industry specific so no, that's that's excellent and you yeah. said this information is available online so people yes. can go on to you just go website. to the main DBED website and look for the uh, research and economic analysis division uh, lots of materials there are lots of reports now this, this type of information must be expensive how much does it cost <laughs> It's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. free. Uh, right. Yes. Right. It's, uh, uh, and it, it can be very helpful in business planning. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, of course. You know, and it's hard to find that information yeah. sometimes. Right. You know, and so we've got it right here, right on the website yeah. that people mm -hmm. can tap into. I said, that, that, that's great. Um, now, next week is a, a special week coming up, uh, Small Business Week. I guess right. this is, uh, you know, kind of blessed by the federal government, and they've declared right. <laughs> next week or the first week in May to be right. Small Business Week. And so there's an awful lot of activities going on. Th there is, yes. And, uh, you know, the Small Business Administration it, um, is planning like a full week of events, including sort of award ceremonies right. and various things. We are sort of... Uh, topping off that week on May the 6th, which is Saturday, uh, with the Small Business Fair. And this is something that DBED either does once or twice a year, or we're one of the sponsors. And this, um, this uh, May 6th, it'll be at Leeward Community College. And that's on the screen right now, everybody, so mm -hmm. you can take a look at that. Yes, and basically there's over uh, 20 various uh, classes that uh, either companies or, or people thinking about starting a company can take and they're very much oriented at sort of early stage companies and so there's everything from uh, just sort of business planning QuickBooks import export businesses social media marketing to name sort of a, a few and financing options uh, and also there's a whole exhibitor sec section we have like about 35 exhibitors and those are all uh, the banks doing small business loans it's all the um, uh, business support services from various state and federal agencies, and then also nonprofits as well. And I've heard that there's some banks out there that are actually looking for people to make loans to. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so come on down because we got we got all. I think I think we have three uh, officially that'll be there. Yeah. Very good. Well, and it's usually a well attended event. There's an mm -hmm. awful lot of people yeah. that show up for this, and, and they usually get quite a lot of information. Yeah, and it's free. And it's free. Yeah, yeah. you just have to free. get up on a Saturday morning and you know <laughs> get down there by eight o'clock for the if you want to do one of the beginning. Well, sessions. hopefully the traffic won't be that heavy yeah. on a Saturday morning. 
And I know sometimes they also do this on this side of the island. Uh, yes, we, we alternate between yeah. usually uh, HC Honolulu Community College and, and Leeward Community College. We're looking at some point trying to do uh, West Oahu and maybe is maybe a windward side at some point as well. Wow, that's ambitious. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's good to get that information out there and make it available because it, once people start plugging into this and get a good handle on what's going on, their businesses become a lot more successful. Yeah, about half the companies of about half the people who attend are already have companies and then the other half are people uh, who are just starting a company and so thinking about starting a company. Then. Yes. Yeah, very good. And we've been trying to, um, I think the community has been trying to encourage the neighbor islands to have business fairs as well. Right? Yes, so. yeah. We also, uh, th this one we do on Oahu, but we all, DBED is also supporting, uh, for instance, the uh, Maui Business Conference. Actually, it's the Hawaii Business Conference on Maui, which is uh, May 3rd and 4th next right, week. Right. Uh, so right. DBED Stanford. is supporting that. Uh, we are looking to support business fairs on the Big Island, and then also we have supported the small business fairs on Kauai in the past as well. Well, and the Chamber of Commerce next week has their Small Business Academy. That's right. You mm. know, yeah. on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah. You know, and then I also I got a call from Bill um, a couple days ago uh, from Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me to announce that here in Honolulu, they've got some small business uh, training going on at their store out at Alamo. Huh? Uh -huh. So um, you probably heard that they acquired LinkedIn. Right. And so right. now LinkedIn is being plugged into all the different integrated programs that they have. And, and right. uh, they've, they've, a lot of people are jumping on board yeah. Uh, yeah. and really participating in the uh, small it's business. It's going to be a full week next week. It is. Uh -huh. There's a, a lot going on. So... Um, I guess this is all part of what DBED does. I mean, they just provide an awful lot of opportunity for training. You've got other seminars that are going on, you know, after next week. I mean, this is an ongoing thing for you. Right. right. Again, uh, the High Step that program that we talked about, the Hawaii State Trade Expansion Program, we've been having a series of seminars, and uh, we just had one today, actually, on the uh, legal aspects of exporting. Um, and these are half-day seminars, so we have two more coming up in May. Uh, one on um, financing, one on financing and, and one, on one on the Taiwan market. Right. So, really? so some of them are subject subject specific and some are market specific. Right. So yeah. that's that can be very useful. Right. You know, and, and then and Taiwan should be very interesting. Yeah. And right. then in June we have one on Canada. Exporting to right. Canada. Even more interesting. Right. Which yeah. is one of the markets um, that for companies that are new to exporting, uh, they're encouraged to look at Canada because that's a, a little uh, easier market to Common get into. Common language. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, close, close neighbor. So logistically, in terms of what you'll be spending to send your product there, could hopefully be a little less than doing some of what the What I understand, other. there's no wall being built up right. there, so right. it should be easy to get back and forth. Yeah, yeah. they're still friendly right now, but we'll yeah. see <laughs> some of the comments that have been made lately, but anyway. And um, uh, yes, and then we have one coming up. Um, uh, one of the trade shows that uh, we do, and that's an that's another thing that we didn't talk about as far as our, our high step program is we do these Hawaii pavilions. Mm -hmm. um, DBED selects trade shows that we think will be beneficial for a number of our Hawaii companies and we buy booth space and we go in as a large group. Uh, we recruit companies to be part of it. Uh, one of the more popular uh, shows we've been doing has been the Tokyo Gift Show, which is in September in Japan. Um, it's popular because it, it, it spans a, a lot of different types of companies can go in there, but also a lot of com our companies want to get into the Japan market. So we're actually doing a, a seminar specifically geared towards um, that trade show, gearing up um, for how to prepare for a trade show, what you should be doing there, how to follow up, as well as just doing so business in training Japan. training that you go right, through in right, order right. to get properly prepared to make it right. much more effective for right, you. Right, right, so that they can get the maximum benefit right. from and, being there. And this one in Tokyo is, is in de December? Uh, it's The September. show is in September, and yeah. the training is at the end of June, right. okay. uh, last week of June. And it's just in time for Christmas. <laughs> so people could right. actually go. I mean, right. you can actually sell product at these shows, right? Right, right. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, that's great. So yeah. if there's any company out there that's thinking about trying to get into the Japanese market or maybe already there and want to expand it, this could be a good show to, to participate right. in. Right. Now, do they have to apply to go or, or how do they per get picked to get to participate? So again, uh, if you go to our website, invest.hawaii.gov, we have an online application and you send that in and then uh, we do look at the, the 
what types of products um, um, are. So you want to have a mix. Right. You we know, do want to have, have a the mix. Right mix go. Right. And, and also companies that are looking at uh, Japan as a uh, all year market. I mean, that it, it's sure. not just to sort of go in and sell one time and then and leave. It's basically to find sort of permanent distributors, importers, and mm -hmm. things, and really set yourself up in the Japanese market. No, that's that's good. And does the Taiwan work the same way? What you were describing, or is that more of a, a lecture series, not so much a trade show? It's right. We're offering. Uh, it, it's going to be basically to talk about uh, the Taiwan market, what the okay. opportunities are. But we haven't. Uh, DBED has not. Uh, selected any shows in the Taiwan okay. market. However, we do have another program <laughs> where companies who have that in their export plan to go into the Taiwan market can apply for financial assistance through mm. our high step program that can help them pay for tra uh, travel, airfare, and uh, the cost of doing a trade show, say, in Taiwan or doing you know some other kind of um, sales meeting. You know, it's, it's amazing. Every time we talk about this, the, the amount of activity that is going on within DBIT just is, is amazing, you know, all the support that's out there, if people that were just more aware of it to take right. advantage of it. Right, uh, this right. Is, this is good. Right. Um, and then you've got, you've also got shows that you choose to do on the mainland, too. So it just doesn't have to be all international. There could be also domestic right. opportunities, right. too. Well, right. With the High Step program, the shows we do on the mainland are internationally focused, but they're on the mainland. I mean, for instance, one coming up where we'll have a Hawaii pavilion is the um, Bio uh, International Convention, which is a very large life sciences uh, mm -hmm. trade show, like over 16,000 attendees. Wow. A mm -hmm. lot of biopharma companies from all over the US, Canada, Europe, and Asia attend that show, and so we're taking you know, uh, six or eight companies into that show, into Hawaii Pavilion, and uh, that's coming up in June. It's in San Diego. San Diego. But yes. it gets a global audience. About a third of the audience is international. Wow. Okay. So that, that's another opportunity for people to just create that higher level of awareness yes. for their product. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And also trying to help the life sciences industries in, in Hawaii. I mean, we have a small life science industry here, but we have a lot of good assets. I mean, things coming out of UH, and then also the Cancer Center and JAPSOM. I mean, a lot of interesting things, even in Queens as well. Very good. Well, you know, we are getting up to the end of the show. We're going to wrap up here in a, in a few seconds. Any final words or anything you want to mention before we, we close? Well, we just encourage companies that are looking to grow their companies, um, look to exporting as a possible way to do that, and go to our website, invest.hawaii.gov, and look up exporting. Um, and then, uh, I mean, we have the other programs that are Easy yeah, I mean, so if you're far, a growing you know. company and looking for space, come talk to us about, you know, where, where the enterprise zones are, and mm -hmm. maybe we can help you out on that if you want to start adding a lot of people, and, you know. Yeah, it's just a great resource to have. Just tap right in there, and you can find out a lot of different things that are available to, to help anybody become successful. So I applaud your efforts in all those areas. Uh, this is uh, Reg Baker, uh, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we had a, a couple great guests today talking about uh, with DBED and, and all the different programs and services and support that they have for the business community here in Hawaii. Um, we need to do everything we can to encourage the state legislature to continue to fund these programs, to continue to make the small business community as successful as possible. Uh, until next week, aloha.